Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server, and today we're going to be testing out the fusion that launches this week. Okay, so I've got early access to Armand's. When he's not chatting up the ladies in the market, he is doing some crazy stuff. We're going to go through his kit today. I'm going to show him in a bunch of different areas of the game. Uh, I've left the sound on today, probably for the first time ever in Raid, because we do have a new kind of like backing soundtrack, and I thought I would just see how it flows with what I'm doing. So let me know what you think of the kind of like new sound going on with Raid Shadow Legends. Right, let's get on to this then. I did a video, or sorry, I'm dropping a video at the same time as this one, because this is when we're allowed to start releasing content, which also shows off the new heroes that are in the game and their kits and stuff. So I guess if you want to see that, I'll link it at the end of this video and you can check it out. Uh, right, let's get into this then. So Armand's certainly hyped up as one of the best fusions ever honestly he's like gonna be nuts i think so we're gonna test him out here and see if he lives up to that hype let's just go through his kit quickly first we've got an a1 wide blade here which is attacks one enemy books up to a 50 percent chance of increasing the cooldown of a random uh, random active skill He's kind of pretty heavy arena centric in his kits. This is a really nice A1 for an arena champion when you're just trying to get background to your abilities. You're locking somebody out. He needs accuracy for the rest of his kit anyway. So chances are you're definitely going to lock, well, 50-50, you're going to lock someone out with this ability here. It says as well, builds this champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So you could probably get a nice 20% turn meter feel on the A1 as well. I don't know. I guess it does work on ally attacks. We'll test it today, I guess. Ally attack here, you might get yourself a 20% turn meter feel while someone else is using their ability because you're coming in with your A1, which is quite interesting. Okay, then A2. This is the ability that a lot of people are uh, worried about, I guess. You've got an AoE ability on a three turn. Really short uh, duration on the AoE. Steals all turn meter of each target. Let's let that sink in for a second. So you're taking away all of the turn meter, except enemies under a sheep, and then you're placing a stun on them as well. So let's say everyone's at half turn meter. Well, you're going straight to full turn meter, so you're going again, which means this is more like on a two-turn cooldown, and because you've reset them back to zero turn meter and stun them, you're basically making them on a two-turn cooldown as well before they can even do anything. It's very possible that this will be a never-ending cycle of Armands versus the world. Very possible. Two-turn cooldown, really, whilst locking out the whole enemy group. This could be the most insane ability ever created in Raid Shadow Legends. Only thing that you do have to be aware of is he could weak hit. Okay, so he is magic affinity. If you're up against uh, force-based champions, then I think all of it could weak hit. And again, we'll, we'll test it. I think that the turn meter steal and the stun chance all has a chance to weak hit. Not sure about the turn meter steal, honestly, but without testing it. But certainly the stun chance, you would have to not weak hit to land the stun. Not sure about the stealing turn meter, but I think that also would, would have the ability to weak hit. Okay, in the A3, which what a lot of PvPers are very sad about, I think this is the most broken skill, but because a lot of players are really hating sheep in the game right now, um, another champion doing sheep is, is starting to like wind people up. You've got here, places a sheep on an enemy for a turn, books to 100% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies, fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each buff removed. This is, again, it's a kind of crazy skill. What I want to test in this video is, I think Wukong doesn't care about stone skin with the sheep ability. So my first thing is, does Armand also not care about stone skin? Will he sheep stone skin, like guaranteed, rather than 50-50 chance? And then also, can this buff removal also take stone skin away better than 50-50 chance, like guaranteed? Or is it 50-50 like it should be? So that's a couple of things I want to test. But either way, removing all buffs from all enemies is pretty nuts, right? Being able to target sheep someone is pretty nuts. So yeah, it becomes a wave killing machine with these two steals together. Basically, I, I can't see that he's done an A1 a lot because of 
these two just being on such uh, short cooldowns. So it becomes a wave killing absolute monster. We've then got the passive here. Whenever a sheep is removed or expires, okay, so he applies one, and then obviously others can apply in your team if they've got it as their abilities. It's Wukong as well if he's on the same team. Whenever a sheep buff is removed or expires on an enemy, increase the cooldown of a random skill on that enemy to its max. Wow. That is absolutely disgusting right there. I forgot about this, this part. That is absolutely disgusting. Wow. I wonder if that needs accuracy to, to happen. I guess, it, I guess it doesn't because the sheep thing is already going on. Again, I don't know. Some of these interactions, until you see the code of it, some of them are quite funky. So you might still need accuracy for that to happen. But yeah, imagine that. You've got Wukong sheeping someone, he's sheeping someone. You might have someone with um, the blessing that can polymorph as well. Anytime they come out of a sheep, you can, you can max out their, one of their skills. I mean, it's RNG layering on RNG, honestly, but still, it's crazy. Builds his champion's termity by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So you could get like a 30, 40% termity to fill for this. Yeah, okay. And then he's got speed in arena as well. So as I say, he's very arena-centric, but first thing I want to do is test his damage. Get ready for raid. Maximum damage. damage. So I'm not quite matching the bandana of our mans, but we're close. We've got Savage Gear alongside Crit Damage Gear. Uh, we've got, what, 5.9k attack, crit capped, 279% crit damage. I don't have a blessing for him. He's not empowered, which means that he could go a ton higher. He does have a very low base attack, 1167. So he's not meant to be a damage dealer. He's meant to be a support champion. Um, but all of his kit does scale from attack, right? So... We're going to see what he does. I do have damage masteries on him, including Helm Smasher. So let's test this out. Okay, we're in our normal testing area here. Dragon stage 20. We've got a normal testing team. Don't forget, this team is just here to show you like, what he could achieve. What's his max damage potential? So we get poison on them, poison on us. We're using Gurp Tux damage boost. We're using Bad L's damage boost. We've got increased attack on. We've got drop defense and weaken on the enemy. A1 then. Against Apothecary here. Slow this down. A1. 248k. It's actually quite a big hit. It's actually quite a, a smack. Okay, then. Let's check out the A2, which is the one which is the danger hit. AoE. 200k across the board. It's actually not weak, considering everything else it's doing. It's not weak. Okay, then. The A3, which is the sheep skill. I guess it's not going to do... Any damage, actually. I think it just turns him into a sheep. And then we would buff still the rest. So no damage achieved on the A3. So I'm kind of interested to see how disgusting this guy can be. What I've done is I've just put him in Merciless set. I don't have good Merciless set at all. Like, in fact, it's bad. Uh, I wonder if I've actually got a crit great set of gloves. No, I don't. So I can't crit cap him. He's literally in my only set of Merciless gear, and it's horrendous, right? So... 236 speed. I've got some accuracy in his kit, 276, so he lands his A2. Merciless set, I think, could be interesting on him because we get this chance to reduce the cooldown of a skill on his... This is for PvE, by the way, like, you know, not PvP. And he's got a chance to ignore some defense. If I could crit cap him, way better. I've got Warmaster on him to do some damage to bosses and stuff. And then I've taken things like Arcane Celerity to boost turn me to when the stuns wear off. I've taken Whirlwind of Death to give me more speed as we kill stuff and Spirit Haste. But I'm just curious, really. I'm curious to see, like, can he just run into, you know, Spider 20, for example, and just do it and just do it by himself? Obviously, you don't get the same sort of turn meter drops in other content, but just wondering if he can do it by himself. Like, do we need his A3 at all in this sort of content? His A3 is going to be brilliant for arena-based content, but I'm not certain that we, we really want to use it in PvE until you get to, like, high-level Doom Tower stuff. If you don't really want him to be sheeps, we just want him to, to be stunned all the time, right? So if I'm on against stage 20, where I'm actually the positive affinity as well, we take all of the turn meter away and we stun. We A1. We do it again. I mean, I don't know if Raider thought about this. 
don't know if they thought it through, guys. Spider 20. I'm running at 236 speed right now. I'm not running fast, okay? Some people might say, oh, that is fast. It's okay as a speed level. It is not fast. So if you just throw anyone in alongside him that's doing damage, you know, it becomes a joke. It actually becomes a joke. Anybody else in alongside him, cold hearts, like, doesn't matter who it is, right? Because they're in no threat. There's no threat to them whatsoever. Oh, actually, actually we've taken some hits. Did take a couple of hits. Maybe it's not quite as clean as I think. But anyway, you know what I'm saying here? It just needs one champion in here that does any, either enemy max HP damage or whatever because we've got no danger at all. Which makes, makes the game, honestly, kind of simple. It makes it very simple. And this is at 236 speed. I've not pumped crazy speeds up. I guess it just rolls the same. I've not changed this build here, but we're just going for stage 10, dragon hard. So as long as he's got a little bit of supporting cast around him. So I'm thinking Lydia, give me my drop defense and weaken. But anyone who drops defense, honestly, we rip the turn meter off. We stun the whole enemy team. I bring someone in who's going to actually do some damage alongside him. And honestly, then all you're doing, all you're then focused on is, okay, I need to bring a team that can deal with the boss. Like, I just need champions in my team now that can deal with beating up a boss because the waves are so inconsequential once I've got Armand's. Like, I know that he's built to be a PvP champ, but damn. He's so crazy for PvE as well. Like, so crazy. Just like, bam. Who's having a turn here? Who wants to go? Who needs to have a turn? Because no one's getting one. It's absolutely absurd. I cannot believe, honestly, that this champion gets through testing. How is this champion through testing? Imagine. And we'll see it in a minute if I could get a team quick enough to, to play with my plat buddies in the content creator group. But imagine it in PvP. So at this point, he's irrelevant for bosses. He's rubbish on bosses, right? What's he doing? Nothing really. Apart from maybe, uh, you know, the Eternal Dragon. Is it the Eternal Dragon? Anyway, the Doom Tower Dragon where you can lock out abilities. Okay, that's going to be useful. But honestly, for just about all bosses, you can't stun bosses. You can't, I guess you can turn me to control bosses, but um, you just have to bring a squad in that can actually deal with a boss. And um, Stolter should be able to do it, but I guess I don't have him built right for it. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. He makes a mockery of any kind of wave-based content. So it then comes down to, can you bring the rest of the squad in just to deal with the boss and I guess speed up the wave killing? But there's not really any, you know, there's not really any game mode where there's a wave where he's not just going to be absolutely insane. Like, absolutely insane. Finite, up until stage 25, he's going to be able to just steal the turn meter away. He's not best at Finite because he's single target stuff. He's the best champion in the game for the wave part, right? Which makes the, the, the team you need way easier because actually one of the biggest challenges with Finite is... I need a team for the waves and then a team for the boss. And they're not normally the same thing. He will open the door to easier teams for finite. Because all you're doing then is thinking about, well, I need four champions for the boss. I just need four champions that can deal with the boss. And that's a much easier prospect than, being, than dealing with all of the fight. Okay, so that's, that's kind of nuts for that as well. Honestly, yeah, he could solo Minnow. Like, I'm sure he'd be able to solo Minnow. Maybe I'll throw him in as a... Well, I'm sure he will. I'll throw him in as a duo to speed up things for the video, but mainly because I want the drop defense to speed up the killing. That's all it is. It's just speeding up the killing. And this is not a build which is nutty. That's the crazy thing here. I haven't done like full speed. I could go easily over 300, 350 plus speed easily on my account, right? I've just literally brought us in here a uh, pretty low level stuff. Yeah, it's low-level stuff or, or mid-tier at, at best, right? Look at it. 
Christ, he doesn't even need Lydia. He doesn't even need her in there. These waves are old school, easy to kill stuff. Look, it's just whatever. Whatever. What do you want from me? A lot of killing, no problem. I mean, it's just kind of nuts. Full turn meter, stun the side ads. Sorry, dude. You're not getting much of a turn. Bye bye, turn meter. Okay, I can't stun him, but I can still steal his turn meter, right? Bye bye, turn meter. I don't know how it got through. It's almost like it's April Fool's joke, this one. I don't know how this got through. Like, it's so comfortable. It's too comfortable, right? I can't even stun this boss, and he's a joke to me. I cannot even stun him. He's an absolute joke. I've got to say, I don't normally show a campaign ever in, in stuff like this, but I thought, why not? Nightmare campaign 12-7. It just, like, crossed my mind. You know, a lot of people struggle with this, actually. A lot of people do struggle with Nightmare campaign because it's really hard, right? The um, Mortu Macabre is really, really difficult to take down. I guess he probably still won't be stunnable, so maybe it won't be just a cakewalk, but... Um, I mean, it, it might be. <laughs> it might be. It might be. Look at how easily he will be able to deal with at least farming the highest stages of Nightmare Campaign, if that's what you want. You know, in terms of getting like maximum bang for your buck of your energy for XP. In, if you do one of those like champion training tournaments, he is pretty damn nuts. Just curious what this looks like on the boss. So we do steal the turn meter of the boss. We don't care about the side ads. And the boss of... This, this is one of the, the areas, honestly, which... Okay, he did get a turn. He got a turn because we focused side ads. If I was doing this, like, myself, there's no way that he would get a turn there. So I would just focus him. But without trying and without... change, I haven't changed Armand's build and Dithy... I don't know what Dithy's build was like, actually. Dithy has got, what, 224 speed. Again, okay, more crit damage and stuff than I would be able to achieve, but the crit damage and stuff's kind of irrelevant. That just speeds it up. My free-to-play could definitely do 12-7 Nightmare with Armand in the group, right? Good. And if we were farming stage 12-6 with food, I don't think he's going to be the quickest in the game because he doesn't... And especially in the build I've got him in, he's not even crit capped right now. But who's going to stop him? Who's actually going to stop him? I, I guess the food's probably not even going to die. It's really just crazy. Like, I can't get it, it. It's not registering in my head how crazy he is right now. Honestly. It's, he's nuts. I, I often see in comments... Oh, he's going to get nerfed, you know, on, on videos that I do. Oh, AJ, he's going to get nerfed. It's been like a handful of champions that have ever been nerfed, legendaries at least. Like a very small amount, okay? I would not be surprised if this one is actually nerfed. Like that's where he's at for me. He's bonkers. Like it's bonkers. Nightmare, 12-6, 45 seconds. Actually kind of quick considering he's not crit capped. He's not built for damage anymore. He's got War Master on. I, I could probably do it in 20 seconds if I rechanged him to his first build that I showed. He is nuts. Okay, so I'm just going to come in on Doom Tower here. One thing I do want to test is this negative affinity stuff. So uh, let's just test, test this. Doom Tower is a great place to test stuff. So let's just see if I can get this done. Oh, maybe I've got him too slow. Hopefully I'm not dead. I am dead. <laughs> it was the right type of thing, though. So let's throw in Necrit just to protect him for a minute. So I want to I want to check things like the buff steal here. Necrit's so damn crazy, right? Uh, okay, so the a a um, no not AOE uh, ally attack. What was I wondering here on the A one? Will we lock someone out of abilities and get turn meter from an ally attack? Let's try that over here. He's negative affinity, so it might be a bad test actually. So we did lock him out. We did get turn me to fill. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, I've been locked out as well, right? I was, I was thinking that. Why am I not able to use my A3? So let's try the A2. A2. Do we steal turn meter if we weak hit?
No, which is right. So obviously it all comes as one package. If you don't weak hit, you're going to steal the turn meter and you're going to stun. If you do weak hit, you don't steal the turn meter and obviously you don't stun it. It's like one mechanic by the looks of it, which is how it should be coded. So that's right. And then the sheep. So let's just see here. Places a sheep. This should just go through any negative affinity as well. This should just happen because I'm not hitting to do it. So you know, this dude here should just become a sheep as long as I got the accuracy requirement. And then I'm curious. I don't think this cares about affinity either because I'm not hitting. So I don't think there's any affinity check on the A3. Turns him into a sheep. Buffs are gone. Just happens. There's no affinity check because I'm not striking to do it. So that makes him even more valuable in arena, honestly. The A2 can't be super high value in arena, but the A3 is super high value in the arena. Okay, so we changed him up now for a more arena centric build. I've just gone basically full accuracy, ways to gain turn meter. Uh, I've just gone for full perception gear. Actually, I didn't check, check his other items, but it's probably fine. I would just push as much accuracy as I could, honestly, and speed. Accuracy and speed together make this guy an absolute monster. I guess before I get into that, let me just show you like a high level of Doom Tower. Can he just solo it? Could he just solo? As long as it's not affinity, as long as I don't have problems with affinity, I think he could probably just solo high levels of Doom Tower. Hard. Because he's just ripping turn meter, he's stunning them. I mean, you've probably seen enough from the video so far to understand what the hell's happening next, right? And then all you do is you bring any DPS you want. Like for Doom Tower Hard, one of the biggest problems is I can't bring my DPS because as soon as I take a hit, I'm going to be dead. Well, this guy's like, don't worry, fellas, bring who you like. You are never taking a hit. You are never taking a hit. It's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Anyway, let's get into some arena gameplay and see what the hell he's going to do in there. I'm thinking like live arena, he's going to be nuts. Hopefully, I've got some teams I could try this against. I really want to see the interaction first with Stone Skin. Let's try this. Probably Stone Skin here. Um, now, what sort of team does he play in? He's going to be your crowd control dude, right? So. He's not your damage yet yeah? in this sort of build. He's literally in there to make sure the enemy don't really do anything. Uh, what's his speed aura like? Better than most 28%. That's pretty good. I'm guessing though, like this guy is probably quicker than me. Do I even have, then I'm probably going to be locked out. I don't know how quick. And I'm, I'm imagining senders really quick. I don't know if I've got anyone built super fast right now. Let me just, let's just take these out for a second and just try and test something. So. Alf, what's her speed or a little bit better? Is she built quick? 392, my arbiter right now. She's pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um, my C is 320. She might be a bit too slow. Uh, let's take you out. And then let's just bring in someone who's going to do some damage. Got defense stuff going on. Maybe we just bring Stoltis in. Okay. So, or maybe I'd bring in. The king. He's not with his partner, but still, he's built well. I know he's built well. Okay. So, am I quick enough is the first question. And this is, I guess, Raid's hope is to get some speed meta back, back on, right? They want the speed meta back. So, we do get the speed up. We are quicker. So, first question is, can I rip turn meter off them all? Make sure I get another go. Turn meter gone. I actually didn't grab rotuses. Did I just get unlucky or is he protected with this? I think can bone armor protect him from stealing turn meter? Maybe. I don't know. I'm actually, I don't know, honestly. So anyway, we got, a, we got a definite straight away another turn. So we're going to sheep him. Now I'm going to deliberately not sheep ultimate death knight to start because I want to see if the follow-up removes stone skin. So let's go for him. 
turn me into a sheep. It's definitely happening if I drop the accuracy. We didn't remove stone skin there. Okay, so that must be a 50-50 chance to remove the stone skin. But obviously what you can do is sheep the dude. So ultimate death knight is a massive problem in the arena. So the fact that, you, you know, a bit like what we got with some Wukong, we can just sheep ultimate death knight. Let's do that again. Steal the turn meter. Did get taken away this time. So I guess I just got unlucky the first time. But I think we can sheep him and affinity doesn't matter. As long as we've got the accuracy, it's happening. If there were any buffs to remove there that weren't protected, I would have removed the buffs as well. Okay, but stone skin is still a 50-50. And stone skin, you can't steal turn meter from someone who's wearing stone skin. So stone skin will be his direct counter. Right? You know, once we're past the stone skin phase, that's that's it, you know, that, that's gonna be fine. But all the while stone skin's up there, we're not stealing their turn meter. But Sheeping this dude, when he comes back out, his stone skin's gone, right? So, and then obviously you're just kind of like cycling through. You're killing all the dudes that are stunned. And then ultimate death knight's on his own. Well, we can deal with someone on their own. Yeah, it's easy. We can deal with that. We would start locking him out so he's not going to do anything. And this guy is going to be like full on meta. Trouble is, I bet he does it now. Does he know? Okay, I thought he was going to try and sheep there, but he's not. Because if you sheep someone in this kind of like cycle, or he does. So this is the annoying thing. And actually Wukong's annoying for the same reason. All we're doing is we're, we're giving him more health. If you, if you run in full auto like this, like basically the game code doesn't understand that we don't want to sheep anymore. <laughs> you just get this never ending cycle of, of the dude staying alive. But um. And I don't have the damage in my other champs to do it. So we're just going to have that same cycle. I'd have to just stop auto and stop sheeping. My White King, I think, is... I must have stolen some gear off him at some point. But anyway, you can see... I mean, Sender is no joke in the arena. I'll tell you that now. He's no joke. I can't imagine... Do I get a turn here? Let's see what goes on here. Against, basically, meta opponents. Yeah, so... Firstly... Firstly, I got locked out, right? <laughs> so this Yumiko is quicker than the 392 Arbiter I've got, <laughs> which is fair. You're like, this is what we're up against in high-level arena. He's resisting by, what, 700-odd accuracy dude. What are these builds? But obviously, Stone Skin is a problem, right? So Stone Skin... Uh, who's this Smiley? Uh, I thought... I thought Smiley had stopped playing, actually. Maybe that's someone else going by that name. Wow. So that, that's uh, something I just, I just wouldn't be able to deal with that. In any way, shape, or form, would I be able to deal with that? Not a chance. Um, so nothing changed for me there. Let's try Tyranu here. Quick enough, yes. Interesting. Why, why would the AI A1 there? Why would AI not still turn me to there? That makes no sense at all to me. Like, why is he doing that? What's the, what's the coding reason that, that you would want to do that there? Bizarre. That's, that's a bizarre one to me. Like, how would you ever not just want to A2 first, everybody? And then A3, the Death Knight. And then... Then we do whatever we want, honestly. Weird. That's what, I mean, that's definitely a weird bit of coding. So maybe he's a little bit buggy in places. I'll, I'll pass that one back to Raid anyway. But look, what can I say? What can I say? For a specific job in the game, talking controlling enemies, there's not a better champion in this game right now, in my opinion. There's not a better Void Legendary, better Mythical, I, I don't think, anyway. He's absolutely nuts. And he's got to be a must pick up, but don't be surprised if he has changed a bit, I think, because, I mean, you've seen it. He's absolutely nuts. Anyway, there you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you in the next one.